Hi, everyone. This is Mike Thomas uh, from Palm Beach, Florida. Palm Beach County, Florida. Just wanted to do a quick video for the committee year and what my 2023 predictions are. Or my best guess, anyway. Nobody can actually predict anything. And if people tell you that they're able to predict the market, um, wow, they must have some magic crystal ball. But I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what happened in 2021 and 2022. And what the market is probably going to do in 2023. So let's get started. There's going to be a lot of information in this video, and you're going to want to watch the whole thing through. I would not skip around and, and you know skip to the end because there's a lot of good information in this video, and I, I wouldn't want you to miss any of it, okay? So look at uh, we're looking at our chart for Florida. You can see Florida here. Florida is mapped out. And... Um, I, of course, live in Florida, and I'm not a realtor in any of the other states, even though that there is some data available for some other states, and if you want, I can you know, do that as well. But what we're looking at is from December 2020 to November 2022, and we're looking at single-family homes right now, and this is a graph data for the entire state of Florida. So in December 2020, um, when COVID hit, um, actually, it was before COVID. COVID came December uh, 2019. That's why they call it COVID 19. They would have waited one more month. It would have been called uh, COVID 20. But nevertheless, um, here we are at 309,000. January, up, February, March, April, May. I know that we're going kind of quickly here, but you can see that the prices have steadily gone up here, from about January 2022, it started to go up dramatically. We went from 395,000 all the way up to 420,000, which is about $45,000 increase. Uh, and then in September-ish, September, October, it started to come down a little bit. So now we're seeing a peak here at 420,000, now we're down to 400,000. Now the, de the December numbers have not come out yet. And December normally comes out for us around 20th or so of uh, the following month. So we get our December uh, statistics in January, around January 12th. And we get our November statistics uh, in December, around December 20th, and so on and so forth. It's always about 20 days behind because sales have to close and things have to happen. So if you're looking at the townhouse and condominium market, that goes to you know, what happened there. And again, started at about 230,000 in December 2020. As it's going up. Then it goes up kind of flat here a little bit, but then it goes up again. By December 2021, we are at 285,000 and continues to go up to 300,900, let's say 325,000. Um, and then it came down to 305,000, so 20% slide in one month. And then it started to stay a little yeah. bit steady here. And that was your condominium money. Now, condominium is a little bit different than single family homes because with a single family home, real estate is actually considered the land. And any improvement on that land um, is considered an improvement, whether that's a house, a townhouse, a condominium. Now, with a condominium, you own the space within the walls. And there's some common ground, um, common area land that everybody kind of owns cooperatively. And so that's a little bit different. So I like to take a look at both markets and see how that happens. Now, I can type in anything I want in here, but I'm going to go ahead and type in my area, uh, Miami, Fort Lauderdale, Palm Beach. And of course, here we are mapped, Miami, Fort Lauderdale is right here, Palm Beach County right there. Going to go to single family homes. And this is, uh, we are still looking at medium 
medium sale price. Medium, of course, is different than average sale price because sometimes you have one property that's really, really expensive or one property that's really, really low for some particular reason, and it just drags down the numbers. But with medium sale prices, those numbers don't look like that. So again, we're looking at 2020, December, price is moving up. A little bit steady, jumping up again, coming down a little bit, but recuperating a little bit, and continuing to rise. Now, the biggest rise is probably from January 2022. A lot of people bought here because if you're looking at $515,000 for a single family home, medium price sale within the Miami, Fort Lauderdale, Palm Beach County area, it jumps. 530, 540, 575, 590, and we're looking at 600,000 peaking in June of 2022. What happened then? Market came down, took a huge slide from July to August, came down $40,000. Went back up a little bit, 10,000, came back down, and we're sitting at 550,000 for the next sales price for the Tri County area. So let's take a look at some other places. Uh, how about Tampa? Tampa St. Petersburg, Clearwater water area. Look at that as well. Let's see what is happening there. So now we're at uh, Tampa St. Petersburg again, starting to go up gradually. I don't know if that's gradual or not gradual, but peaked at about June of 2022 and started to see somewhat of a decline. And this means that the market is coming down. The problem is we don't know, just like any other stocks. I mean, you could put them, oh, it's gonna come down more. Uh, buyers are always optimistic that the, that the prices are coming down even more. And sellers are always optimistic that it's gonna go back up again. So nobody has really a crystal ball. Uh, the factors that influences home prices is things like unemployment for that particular state or that particular area. Now, if unemployment is very low and companies are laying off people in California, does that mean that our real estate here in Florida is going to be affected? And the answer is not really. And it's because of the fact is real estate is very localized. Our real estate is different than New York real estate. New York is different than California. California is different than, you know, any other state, Colorado, you name it, Texas, whatever state you want to look at, you have to look at that particular state because sometimes it's based on the location, 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 location. But let's take a look at a different location. Let's take a look at the Naples area in Marco. A lot of people like that area. We'll look at Fort Myers next. And I'm just looking at single family homes right now. And the reason I look at single family homes more so than townhouse and condominiums is because with a single family home, you can actually tear down the home and build a new one. With a townhouse or a condominium, you cannot do that because it's attached to another piece of property. And so it's difficult to say, well, I'm going to tear down my old townhouse and build a new townhouse there. Um, it's not going to work. And condominiums and townhouses are always in a homeowners association because you have a common wall with the next door neighbor. And therefore, it has to be some type of homeowners association, whether that's an expensive homeowners association or not an expensive homeowners association. Um, you know, varies from, from place to place. Again, here, um, it went up. If you took out this one bad month, of course, um, kind of steady between June and, uh, and November, starts to go up, comes down, and then skyrockets up to $875,000 in November month. By July, it drops. And it drops about $80,000. Stay steady, there's another drop. An average between 875 and 725, and again it starts to recover. What does that tell me? That it's going back up again. 
So when people are saying, oh my God, the real estate market is coming down, it's going to go down further. I don't really buy that because it's in that particular area, uh, it's going back up again. And I can't wait to actually take a look at December's numbers because those numbers give us a true value. Those numbers give us a true value on what things are like. Now, this is the Fort Myers area, also a very popular area. And let's take a look at what that's graph was. They all kind of look alike. They go up at a slow and steady pace until about February 22, January, February 22. And then they shoot up dramatically until about the summer of June. So we're looking at almost 470,000 compared to 315. Big jump, but it slides down. So now we're looking at 470, we're looking at a $50,000 decrease. They have pretty steady, slips a little bit more, goes up a little bit more, and then goes back down to 400. So if I were to take a look at this graph, I would say, okay, the high point was here at 470. Now it's at 400. So that's a $70,000 correction. What happened? The interest rate happened. And the interest rate kind of dictates how much someone is able to buy. As interest rates go up, let's say you're able to buy a $470,000 home with an interest rate of 3%. The interest rates go up to 6% or 7%, and now you're only able to buy a $400,000 home. So you lost $70,000 of purchasing power just because of the, the interest rate going up. And what the feds are trying to do, in my mind, is slow down the market. Now, there's a difference between a market crash and slowing down the market. And I'll go into that real quick for you. When a market slows down, it's kind of like a car. And as the car is slowing down, it doesn't really hit the other car. There's no crash. There's just a slowing of the market. And prices come down. What if the what I call the buyer demand car in front and the seller car in the back, you know, collide and hit each other, then that's called a crash. Why? Because this the buyer drive demand. And that's what drives a real estate market. Everything is supply and demand. When things are hot in high demand, prices go up. When things are in low demand, then real estate prices come down. What I mean by low demand is if there weren't that many people moving to Florida. But Florida is a very attractive state for most people. Uh, Florida has no state income tax, so a lot of people are attracted by that. Working here, there is no state income tax. We just pay federal tax. Uh, people like the sunny weather. Sometimes it does get pretty hot in the summertime. Um, but I've been to other places just as hot as well. So I don't know. I mean, I love Florida. It's been my home for 24 years. And I, I love working here and I love real estate here. Uh, let's take a look at some other places like um, St. Lucie County. Fort St. Lucie area is very popular as well, St. Lucie County. And again, we're seeing the same trend. Starts to go up about June 2022, peaks, comes down what? Starting to go back up. And when it starts to go back up, that means that that's a leveling of where the market is going. And let's take a look at one more place in that Melbourne, Palm Bay, Melbourne, Titusville area, very popular. We're going to take a look at Orlando here. So the median sale prices again are up, they go up, they plus steady, and you're hitting May, June. Again, there's your peak coming back down a little bit, going back up and peaking in October. I mean, I'm sorry. August and sliding down somewhat. 
not a dramatic correction from uh, an average medium sale price of 375, 355. So that's about a twenty thousand dollar slide. Um, I think that that's all that that's going to be. Um, that's just my opinion. Doesn't really matter. But my opinion says that that slide is going to stay. Here we are. We have another graph again. Same type of pattern seems to follow the one for the state and particular counties, peaking at around about June again. And Orlando is a very unique place, the you know, Orlando area, uh, because you have Disney World there. You're attracting a lot of people from out of the area. It is something else that, um, according to real estate, I was looking at a few. Um, Places how much real estate costs around the world, and the United States is actually the most affordable real estate of the first world countries in the world. So, if you well, I'll, I'll give you an example. Uh, for example, um, what was it? Hong Kong was ten thousand dollars a square foot in Hong Kong. That's crazy. Um, and then it went to it was a thousand dollars a square foot or something for another Asian country. Um, I have the statistics on that. Maybe I'll make another video of it because I don't want to run too long to bore you people. But this is Florida, and let me take a look at the one thing that I don't give enough credit to is Tallahassee. Let's take a look at the Tallahassee metro area. It is a college town. And so we see some things spiking in June. And the reason they kind of spike in June, if you know that, um, there is a major university there, Florida State. And people like to buy real estate for their for college students during that time. So I can understand this spike. But if you were to not have this spike and go from here to here, the growth would be kind of slow. Uh, again, peaking again July, June, July of 2022, dropping down a little bit and leveling out. Let's take a look at some other area too, the Gainesville area. Let's take a look at the Gainesville metro area. And here we are, Gainesville, which is uh, home of another major university here in Florida. And we have some prices. I don't know what this big dip is, but if we were to take that out, one month for me does not make a, um, a report. So, I mean, if something drops for a couple of hours on the stock market and then goes right back up, is that really a big deal? So, one month out of place, I'm not sure what happened there. But you can see that it goes up pretty steady. And then again, May, June, peaking, 370000 medium sale price, and coming down dramatically from 370 to 326 that's a, about a $45,000, $50,000 decrease. Uh, once it starts going back up again, you can then assume that the market has leveled out to that price. Now, there could be other changes, and that's changes of unemployment, changes in interest rate changes in the stock market, all of these uh, factors affect real estate. One of the big factors is, um, one of the big factors that affect real estate is of course supply and demand. Um, what kind of laws do we have here? Why do people want to come down here? What are the COVID restrictions compared to other states? We got a lot of people from New York because our COVID restrictions were much lighter for vaccinated people than um, you know, other states. And so people came down here to stay. Uh, that could drive some demand. Uh, there's various other things that drive demand. I mean, if a major corporation were to set up shop here in Florida, that would drive more jobs and income to the area and things like that. Of course, making demand higher in that particular area, the real estate prices would go up. 
So anybody out there that tells you that the real estate market is crashing in 2023, I don't buy it. I think that there is a correction that's going on. And generally, we get a correction about every 15 to 18 years, which we're due for a correction. And the correction generally is about 20%. Um, and with that in mind, the last correction we had was 2007. So we've got 2017, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. So we're at about 15 years right now. Um, this could be part of a 20% correction in the real estate marketplace. I think it's a great time to buy uh, at any time, even at the height of the market. And I'll tell you why. I believe that. If you buy at the height of the market and keep that house for 20 years, it doesn't matter. No, not really. Now, if you're looking to buy, you know, and flip it within a few months time, it probably won't matter either because the real estate market is very inelastic. That means it doesn't jump around a lot from month to month. I mean, you'll see some changes in the marketplace. You know, like down here, you saw a change from 334000 to 326 so it's a $10,000 difference. Um, on a $330,000 house, that's not really a major jump. Uh, so if you're looking to do fix and flips, and I'll be making a video probably about that soon, it isn't going to matter when you buy. You're going to buy low, you're going to fix it, you're going to flip it at a lower price. Uh, if you buy high, you're going to buy a property, you're going to fix it, and you're going to flip it, and you're going to be at the top of the market instead of at the bottom of the market. And that's my take on fix and flips. Um, if you buy a house in the middle of the market, you fix it, you flip it, you're going to get a, a medium price for, for the house, uh, plus some gain. With that said, there's not a lot of difference that you can make. Um, of course, everybody likes to buy low and sell high. But the problem with that is that only applies to the stock market because stock market is very inelastic and it goes up and down a lot. Real estate doesn't do that. If you're looking to buy low and sell high, you may be waiting five or six years. In a stock market, to buy low, sell high, you may wait maybe a week or a month or something. So that buy high or buy low, sell high theory really doesn't work in real estate. Um, the best advice that I can give you is buy in an area where there's growth. Commercial growth, are there restaurants going in? Are there shops going in? Is there businesses coming in? Uh, that's the place to buy. Where there is no growth, that's the place I think, you know, you may want to think about twice on. That means if stores are closing, uh, there's not a lot of restaurants open, everybody's closing their doors. There's a reason for that. And that will slow down the real estate in that particular area. So that's my prediction for 2023. I wish you guys a wonderful new year. Stay safe and please subscribe to my channel.